first meets with the disabilities coordinator in the accessibility services office. They're usually interviewed concerning their needs and they present some form of written documentation. IEPs, summary of performance, transition plans, which come from all from high school, can form part of the documentation, but in and of themselves, that's rarely sufficient. Um, the documentation standards require additional information, especially for cognitive disabilities, that is conditions like ADHD, learning disabilities, um, students on the autism spectrum, traumatic uh, brain injury. A psychological evaluation is usually provided for those conditions. And if the personnel in the Accessibilities Office are comfortable that that documentation meets the documentation guidelines of the Board of Regents, um, they may proceed to provide appropriate accommodations. The accommodations are definitely tied to the documentation. For example, if a student's IEP and the psychological evaluation that came with that indicate that the student has been previously accommodated for a reading disorder, there are several ways for the Accessibilities Office personnel to help. Such a student may need extended time on tests that have, have lengthy reading. They may need the benefit of technology like a screen reader or possibly textbooks in an alternate format. Then the same student might also have an underlying language processing difficulty that requires that they get help with um, uh, getting class notes. But it depends on the student and the documentation that they present. Typically, the accommodations are listed then in a confidential letter and are presented uh, to appropriate faculty members by the student or the accessibilities office. 